I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you watching. And we're in the middle of interviewing Charlotte Swap. We appreciate you coming and sharing. We heard from Adam the last few episodes, and it's such a compelling story. And I do want to remind you that it's, uh, there are more details are available. We're skimming over so much. But at sacredgroves.net, you can hear both their stories and in much more detail and of course there's been other things written about it so unfortunately we probably will skim a little bit here we we got a, uh, Adam and Charlotte up to the point where they had one child and we're getting close to 1988 where Adam as he explained in his story uh, took it upon himself to um, kind of defend his rights and his convictions and was ended up uh, serving or sentenced to 30 years in jail. And uh, we learned that his wife, first wife, Heidi, I'm sorry, um, left. And then uh, Charlotte remained by his side. But during the, ju the jury trials, what, were, what was your thought process? You thought God was going I to... I thought God struggle. was going to step in and he was going to fight our battles. Yeah. And I thought he was going to uh, make everything right. Mm -hmm. um, and that didn't happen. Adam was sent off to... A, well, he was in the county jail. And then he went to a prison. And so then my whole life started... It was all about visiting, writing letters, helping, because um, my yeah. other, uh, my brother and my mother and my brother-in-law, they were in a jail as well, in prison. And so... Oh, that's right. Um, our whole lives were just turned completely upside down, um, just trying to make ends meet. Uh, were you still in Marion at yes, this time? Yes, yes. And so... As time worn on, I mean, it was difficult. It was difficult being separated from my husband. It was difficult for the children. They suffered greatly. Yeah. Did and you feel like God had disappointed you, or would uh, I? Where was He at in all this? I tried to be thankful, because um, we read scriptures on being thankful in all things. Yeah. That was one of my prayers, even though I didn't understand why why things weren't turning out, because my life, as the years were going by, I I just was getting more discouraged and bitter and upset, because you know I wanted to have, I wanted a big family, yeah. and um, that didn't happen, and so just going through all the the pain and hurt of not having your husband there seeing your your children cry and when they'd leave the the visiting room they would just sob and sob and watching them grow up without their father it was very very hard and very discouraging mm -hmm. because it was like okay you know we did the lord's will cuz i totally i was totally right there with adam i thought we were doing God's will, sure. and it's like, 
eventually don't you see some fruits? And so um, the kids, eventually, just to speed things up, you know, that they got married, they moved away, and I was in my home, this empty nest, and yeah. that was really hard. Um, and don't we? We were talking at, at a break earlier, and you did, we just kind of smiled about how God has us plan has plans for us, and we don't know. We don't know what's around the corner, but no, I don't. Know. But you, now, you, looking back, I guess you understand the looking that process. Back, I guess. And, I hate to say I, I I I wish it didn't take so long. Right. But I guess that's what we needed uh -huh. because we didn't know we were in a man-made um, legalistic ev evolving false religion we didn't know that no we, we thought we, we had the truth we don't and everybody else was lost sure or corrupt or an abomination um, we thought we had the truth yeah. And it was a self-righteous, prideful. I was very self-righteous. Oh. And I had that prideful stench wherever I went. <laughs> and we know that God, he knows how to humble us. I mm -hmm. mean, he, he uh, teaches those or draws those whom he loves. And it, sometimes it's like, please don't. <laughs> Thanks for all that love. <laughs> yes. Well, it sounds but, like Adam had to get to a certain point, too, and maybe that took time. And He did. And when he had his experience um, in that cell... And he I, shared that with you yes, right away, did he? Yes. But I have to say, while he was in the state prison, I was sending, making copies and sending him sermons, Brigham Young sermons. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. And he asked me in a really sweet way, uh, sweetheart, could you just, you know, don't send those right yeah. now. Well, I don't think and I didn't understand where he was coming from because I thought, oh, this will give him strength. This is good. And so... Um, Were you getting these out of the journal? Of yes, I'd go stuff? get them out and I'd copy them, send it to him, and oh, my he'd goodness. get these thick envelopes, you know, of, <coughs> of Brigham Young sermons. trying to bolster Oh, yeah, stuff. I'm here for you, sweetheart, even though, you know, it was just difficult. But I was, I was angry because my life wasn't supposed to turn out this way. Yeah. And he was telling me, Charlotte, you've got to read the New Testament. And I'm like, I already... I already, I've, I've read it, <laughs> yada, 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 you gotta read it, yeah, 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 sure. And he would say every day he would, because <laughs> this, it really changed his life, and he knew that I was dragging my feet, and I was miserable. Yeah. And he said, Re did you read the New Testament? Uh, at first I'd say, no, no, you gotta read it. So then I, I got smart, and I'd read a little bit. Did you read the New Testament? Yes, I did. Yes, I did, just to, just to, you know, so he wouldn't keep pestering me. Yeah. Um, he was so on fire with this he, New Testament. He was, but before that happened, God was drawing me. Um, before I moved to Phoenix, I was in the store, and I saw this picture of the name Jesus. And under it, it was John 1.1. 1, 1. Oh. And I saw that, and I just started I, I, I hugged it, pretty much. Oh, I didn't God. know really why, but it just touched my heart. And so I bought it, and then, like, if I would see a cross, I was drawn to. I would see. And this so, was even before? This was before. Wow. And then... Um, God was softening your heart. I would heart, hear huh? songs, Christmas songs about Jesus, and I just, I was hungering for more. And so if there was anything, and like I said, I, I read the Bible, but I didn't revere it. I didn't have a love, or a love for it or an awe or a fear. I didn't 
I didn't trust it. No, we don't. And so, um, to speed up, Adam eventually got out of prison. I never thought it'd happen. I just thought, Lord, I'm just going to be thankful. My life didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. Whatever. Okay, I'm yours. But I was still um, in that mindset. Were you? Well, yeah. Even up through his... Read, having you read the Bible and everything? Well, I didn't read it. Remember, okay, I just okay. kind of, yeah. Well, him okay. reading it, yeah. though, but getting, trying to get you But to when read. he came home, I had time to where uh, he would go to work, and I would start reading. Really? And I've, I started in the New Testament. And then what happened is Jesus was saying one thing. He was saying this over here. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Joseph was saying over here, on the other hand, that designing or corrupt priests had committed many errors. And he was saying um, that the Book of Mormon is the key stone of our religion, and you will get closer to God by abiding by its precepts than by any other book. So I've got Joseph over here, and I've got Jesus over here. Jesus is saying um, to be the greatest, because that was a big deal, go into the highest, become the greatest. And I think that's always been, yeah. because he's teaching his disciples. Right. They, they were asking who's going to be the greatest. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> wants to be the greatest. So I'm reading what Jesus says about the greatest, and it has nothing to do with plural marriage. Nothing to do with plural marriage. It's, it's it never talks about it or anything. It's yeah. humility. Yeah. It's becoming as a small child and being humble. Being a servant. And it's not how many wives you have walking behind you with a hundred kids. It has nothing to do with that. But was this a shocking thought to you? This was just like a. It was like a revelation, and so I'm, I was being torn. I'm being torn. What about my feelings, you know, my yeah. strong conviction that the Book of Mormon is right? And as I kept reading, it was like Joseph saying, um, what's another example? There was just all these contradictions that didn't, it didn't add up. Yeah. Um, and One so, I know you mentioned uh, in a different interview was about the Old Testament and Joseph putting himself into the, into the Old oh, Testament. Oh, another thing was, was when I... And then the Dead Sea Scrolls show. When I got to Revelation, it said not to add or subtract. Yeah. And I was like, oh, did he add or subtract? Because I've got his new inspired uh, version of the Bible. That compares the... Yeah, that compares it. And, and did you go into Revelation and find oh, out? Oh, yeah. yeah. And I went, I well, I, w I was comparing both as I was reading. I did that, too. And it was like, no. No way. No, <laughs> What no, are you doing? Don't, why did you touch this? Because I really felt bad yeah. for Joseph. Like, because I, like I said before, I revered this man. I respected him. I loved him. Yeah. But you don't tamper with God's work, word. I don't care who you think you are. Yeah. Don't touch his word. Well, it was funny because as missionaries would always say, well, that little don't, don't add or take anything away from this revelation. We always were saying, well, that's just that, re that book of John's revelation. But, uh, Joseph, but he did Joseph went in and changed the he book did. of Revelation. So it yeah. kind of contradicts what we were trying to explain away as, as missionaries. Well, one thing I wanted to kind of bring out, too, is that Adam, along the process here in these last five, six years of his in incarceration, tells you that he starts apologizing or saying oh, maybe we're wrong. Oh, I was so wrong. angry. I hated to be wrong. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you're telling me that... Uh, what did we do this? All yeah. this was for nothing. We suffered. And now you're saying sorry? That 2006 was one of the worst years of my life. I, I literally w was praying to die. When, I, he, when he came out or... 2006, that, right. when he went. I didn't mean come to, out, but I meant come out of Mormonism or that. When mentality. he said we were, we were wrong, and he apologized. Yeah. It was like wow, and then plus I didn't have communication with him. We I I hardly ever talked to him because of where he was at. 
Oh, he couldn't use the And the, the maximum phone. security. And it was just, it was one of the, like I said, the bleakest years of my life. And that's when I got that, uh, the name Jesus. He, he was like reaching down, trying to tap me on the head, yeah. shut up, shut up. But uh, I was so stuck. When you're stuck, you can't see it. No. You can't see it. Well, and you don't even know you're You don't blind. even know that you're supposed to see it because yeah. you, don't, you don't even know that you have a problem. Yeah. But um, I wanted to share. May I share? Is, like, sure. Go ahead and share. So while, while I was praying, I was comparing Joseph Smith with Jesus Christ. Now, this was, is actually after Adam's coming Adam's out. out. He's at work. I'm praying. I'm crying. I'm trying to figure things You're out. You're learning and seeing yes. these discrepancies. And so I was reading, Lord, show me, help me. And I'm on my face. I am on the floor and I'm just crying. Why? Why? How does this work? And How can there be these contradictions and problems? And I kid you not, Jesus gave me this scripture John um, 8, 31, 32, and it's, if you continue in my word, because I was reading his word every day, I want to figure this out. Yeah. Uh, then you are my disciples indeed. And that, that might not sound like anything to anyone else, but that cut through this fundamentalist heart. Wow. It did. And you shall know the truth, the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And the more I read, the more, it's like in John um, 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth. <laughs> He's the truth. Jesus is the word. He's the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but, but by me. And it was like that day, all the Joseph Smith pictures came off the wall and I'll tell you I had quite a few in there <laughs> and the more I read the more you just thought about oh, what it wow was. I was bathed in his holy the holy spirit and his the truth of the word yeah and Adam could say you know this Charlotte this look Charlotte that but you know I had to find out for myself sure and another scripture that I absolutely lo love, John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. <laughs> thy word is truth. And 20, believe on me through their word. Jesus is saying, believe on me through their word. And I've got to tell you something, another scripture that's just really rocked my world too, is that when Jesus was resurrected, he sees his two disciples are on the on the road to Emmaus. Sure. He comes up to him. So, what are you guys talking about? And they're like, "Don't you know what's going on? Are yeah. you?" And the main thing that he's telling his disciples, he's revealing himself through the Word. Um, through uh, Mo Moses and the prophets, and he tells them about him through the word first, then he shows him self in the flesh yeah. and disappears. Yeah. And it's it, Luke, uh, and that's in Luke um, 24, 27. So Jesus is letting us know in these incidences that look at my word, trust my word. This is what it this said is, it was going to happen. This is where I am. Yeah. yeah. And it's like the, the other one, um, I've got to get, throw this one in there, Luke eleven twenty seven, where the woman says, Blessed is the womb that bare thee in the breast that gave thee suck. And, and Jesus is like, uh, I'm, that's a nice thought and everything, but I'm sorry, I'm going to correct you. And he said, yea, uh, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Hmm. Now, how can you hear the word of God if you don't, if you don't even believe in it? Yeah. How can you keep it? And what if word you don't of God are they talking about? He's, the Bible. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so the word has set me free. Isn't that true? And every day, my mom, the, the greatest part of the day is getting up and opening that book. And I, I'm over here in Romans. And at the end of my reading, I'm over here in Second Kings. You know, because you just. Study. It is so amazing. It's so alive. It's so true. 
And an, another thing that I want to share is truth never, um, truth never fears investigation. Investigate. I investigate. Kind of, kind of where did the too. where did the Bible come from? How did it get into our hands? Yeah. And Google manuscript evidence for superior New Testament uh, reliability. <laughs> get on there, find out. Check it out. Yes, yeah. check it out because you know what? Of course, you already know. <laughs> you know. can rely on the Word of God because well, Jesus said so, and yeah. He is God, and He can hold His Word together. Yeah, and. And then you contrast that with the Bible or the Book of Mormon where there's no archaeology. Oh, the you've got the Bible and, and the archaeology just yeah. over and over and over again. Well, let me just a couple of last few thoughts kind of that you'd mentioned elsewhere probably, but uh, one was God actually exists outside the church. <laughs> uh, the LDS church, I mean. Oh, yeah, when I was reading um, D.L. Moody, George Mueller, um, George Whitfield. See, I always thought everybody, like Joseph Smith said in the, his first dream, I all mean, his dream, vision, his vision, yeah. that they were all corrupt and yeah, that abominations. Yeah. And, and so I have. And I here they are preaching the word. <laughs> and, and if you research yeah. the Christians that have died for the word, yeah. and what was interesting as I was reading uh, William Tyndale after. Because October 6th of 2014 was when I was uh, born again. Okay. And then I read his biography, and that was the day that they strangled him oh. and burnt him to the stake for his religion. For, for, the Bible. for writing the, uh, translating the New Testament Into in English. English. And it when Talk I about a martyr, huh? <laughs> when I saw that, it was just like, wow. Now, your son asked you at one point, which version of the first vision do you believe in? Oh, yes. Um, this is when I came home because yeah. I was still staunch, sure. you know, Mormon, yeah. fundamentalist Mormon. And he asked me, uh, you know, which, which, so which uh, one do you believe in? And I, I didn't know what he was talking about. What do you I mean? I didn't know. But that there, there were other seven, eight, or nine versions, and I just thought he was. Um, I thought he was dipping into the anti-Mormon, you know, the as Joseph a, Smith haters. As opposed haters. to facts, or yeah. Something, yeah. And then when I found out, it was in his own handwriting. It was like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> you know, that's not. I can, I can look at that. That's not bad. That's in his handwriting. That's yeah. not anti-Mormonism. And funny? when I found out, it had nothing to do with the version that they. Finally, um, put in the Pearl of Great yeah, Price. Yeah, it has nothing. It's, uh, but uh, that, but that didn't bring me out. It was the word. Oh, I, sure. Yeah. It was the word. Now you say your brother um, brought some things to your attention. My or? brother, uh, he uh, came out before me. Yeah. And it was he was a thorn in my side because we were like the best friends, and yeah. he, he just said, "This is a false religion, Charlotte." And so when he left. Uh, Mormonism. I just cried. And was, you, were you judging him? I'm sure. Or I really felt that he was lost. Deceived. Yeah, he was deceived, and I was really spirit. praying for him that a nice little, you know, fundamentalist Mormon girl would meet him because he's single and he would like to get married. But yeah, I was, I was the one. The <laughs> Lord definitely has a sense of humor. I'm praying, bring him back to the truth. Uh, excuse me, Charlotte. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so what, uh, I know you've kind of shared this, but what does Jesus mean to you now? What he did for us? Jesus, he, for him, for God to, to come to this earth um, in, the, in the flesh and give himself for me, he, he means everything to me. He is so, so loving, so patient. He, he is my all. And it was, it was hard because, you know, my, 
I love my father, I love my family, but you know what, I love Jesus more. Yeah. And I, I appreciate the blood and the pain that he went through on that cross for me. And we just don't understand that, or we didn't, I mean, this is new for you the last couple of years. It's only been three or four or five years for me, too. I, I just didn't appreciate no, I what didn't. that sacrifice no, really was either. and who he was. And who now he is. <laughs> I just, I cry in the day, I just knowing that he would care enough to open our eyes because I didn't love the Bible. I didn't no. love the Word of God. No. And for him to reach down in this heart and um, touch it and bring, bring us out. I am very, very humbled and very grateful for that gift, that yeah. gift. And I just want to proclaim him, Jesus is everything. He is everything. And you know, I, we were, again, joking about this a little bit, what humor God must have. Oh, but yes. To knowing what you were going through all this, and, and just be patient, Charlotte. Things will work out, and you have joy coming in your life that you have no, no idea about. And it has been joyous. Yeah. Having Adam home and being without him for that many years and having him home, we just... And be together in Oh, in, in, in Christ, Jesus, yeah. yes. Be together in Him. And what a joy. Just to get up every morning and to partake of His delicious Word. It is so, oh, taste and see how, how great the Lord is. Blessed is the man that trusteth in Him. Yeah. I just, well, like, like uh, I can't Adam, get enough. Like Adam was told, read the Bible and read it as a child and trust yes, every word. Yes, yeah. and I do. Yeah. I don't understand a lot, but that's not, well, and I won't. And it comes until, as you need oh, it, Oh, darn probably. right. But yeah. it's a journey, and it's a, and it's a journey with well, Jesus. Well, you've been so through so much. I know we've glossed over so much of it, but your ex <laughs> experiences with your dad and your mom and, and yes. then with Adam, and you're being so faithful and raising the children and the sacrifices. But uh, It's been worth it. I wouldn't have said it back then when I was in that... Uh, going through all that pain, but, but now, now, with it being all behind us, the grace that, <sighs> that God's given. It's so worth it now. It's so worth it. Uh, well, Charlotte, thank you. You're such a delight, and God thank bless you, you and all me. that you do, and, and your continued Christian walk. It's just <laughs> wonderful. And thanks for joining us. We'll see you. <laughs>